Today I'm talking about know your worth. We're doing more shadow work. <laughs> We're looking at the collective shadow behind this statement of know your worth. A lot of us take this as a great statement, know your worth. And we hear this coming out of Hollywood and America and places like that um, where people are asking for what they're worth, okay? And um, a lot of the times it's to do with women asking for what they're worth because they want to be paid the same as men are, are getting paid for the same types of roles uh, at the exact same jobs and they're not getting paid the same because for a very long time it, men have uh, been hailed as being much more important and much of more, more value than women and so we see that reflected in the workplace um, of, and this is where this idea is coming from know your worth asking for what you're worth and um, and it sounds really great and in many ways it is fantastic and it's really great but we want to look at what does it mean to know your worth and the negative connotations behind this idea so one of our biggest problems and this is just taken from one of the courses that I've written one of the biggest problems is that we mostly learn in stealth mode so stealth mode is what I describe as undetected um, subconscious learning okay and so studies have shown that the subconscious mind process 20 million bits of information per second in comparison to the conscious mind that can only process 40 bits of information per second so the subconscious mind is 500,000 times faster than the conscious mind and what it does is that it doesn't give us all the information because we can't deal with it. We will have a, a, a computer crash, you know, our minds is like a computer and we will have a crash, we'll have an overload and, sorry, we go into buffering mode, it's just buffering, trying to think. Um, I don't know how you feel, but I know that whenever spirit is trying to teach me something new, I feel like I don't know what is happening. When my ego is stretched, my conscious self, my the conscious part of my ego is stretched beyond its um its limits. Um and I'm just like, I don't know what this is, you know? And so this is why these kind of videos are really important because it's gonna help to broaden your mind, it's gonna help you think more, to think more deeply, and to not just we just um fall into certain cultural practices or doing, do, we do certain things without knowing why we're doing it. We just do it because we like it. We do it because it's our culture, you know, and we get nostalgic about copying our cultural behavior, and that's what causes us to perpetuate a lot of things. Now, I have been doing this for years, where if I know um, that I'm being manipulated emotionally by my family, even though they don't know they're doing emotional manipulation, because like I said, their conscious mind don't know what's going on um in the subconscious the subconscious uh is trying to to save your life is what the, the subconscious is always trying to do the subconscious wants you to mirror your culture so that you do not get attacked okay and so and and me i've gotten I've, i'm attacked many times or people take revenge in their own way on me because I don't do the things that they want me to do or do it in the way that they want me to do it. I talked about this thing um, about the shadow that many families will try to suppress certain things in you, which is basically suppressing your individuality, they're supp suppressing your autonomy um, and so that you can conform and comply to the family. Now these are control mechanisms that is done so that those people who are in charge of us, the people who are in charge of this, they say the one percent that's in charge of the ninety-nine percent. Can I count? Um, <laughs> that the way that they do it is through multiple layers of manipulation, and they have multiple layers of control to keep us all conformed and doing the same thing. And if we are conforming to certain cultural so-called norms, it's much easier for us 
to not be individuated because we don't want to harm or hurt or upset our families. So we're going to fall in line sometimes. But I just want to talk today specifically, I want to go into this knowing your worth. I really talk so much. Before I get right into the video, I do want to say um, thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for your viewing. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe and do press the like button. So looking at this worth system, which is coming very much out of America, well, American ideology that spread, but America didn't, didn't create this worth system. I'm going to get into that in a minute. But when the colonizers um, had slaves all about the place and workers as well, because what happened is if you're going to use one particular set of people like, like black slaves, right? Um, then what they did was they raised the status of the, the white people, some of the white people whom they used to refer to as white trash. Um, but they had to raise the, the level of, um, of some white people because they were also picking in the cotton field, but they would also, they would get payment to pick cotton, very like minuscule amount of money, which, which is what the slaves then ended up with once, once slavery was abolished, then you'd have the most minuscule wage and most people had to sell themselves back to their masters anyways or or go back to work for their masters for their keep, which is the same slavery. Um, but what happened is to to for them to be able to um, to have ownership in, 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 in a sense over their own people, their own um, race, what they had to do was divide people into class groups. And if you're in a higher class or the upper class um, or the aristocrat, you were definitely worth more and you would be treated well and your life would be, you would have more protection over your life. So know your worth has to do with your protection over your life as well as how much you can earn for your masters, okay? So, Let's say that a, a, a black man in the field who was quite big, who could work really hard, um, he'd have a greater worth. So when he's going to be sold, he's going to be worth a lot because he, he, he's, he's, he's going to make a lot of wealth, okay, or a lot of strong babies um, so that they could have more profit. How much profit can you bring into your master is going to determine how much you're worth which is the same exact system that was be that's now still being used especially when you're looking at the um the the music industry movies whatever it's how much ticket can you sell therefore how much is the um this the production the, the the producers and the um the channel like Netflix or whatever it is um how much can they make out of you will determine how much your worth but on top of that um because they claim women wouldn't sell as many tickets or this and that or whatever women weren't really getting um weren't really getting the pay uh or they were just being bamboozled because there's still this psychological deficit in people's mind that women should be paid a certain amount of money i can't really go into this in depth because there's a different things that i really want to cover um, and I'm like, it was a video, I've, I've said so many things already. I'm probably going to have to cut out, cut this video down quite a bit. But I just want to make those, like, you know, see the correlation between how much you're worth according to how much profit you can make the company. So much of our current um, practices that we have, whether it's business or our cultural practice, it came from Rome and Rome's slavers mentality. Rome was a place for slaves, okay? Rome was a place of slave and masters. Rome took their model from, from the Greeks and then they really perfected it. Um, the Europeans took that on and taught it everywhere. And a lot of the slave model that, the, the lot of our business practices are based in slavery. So this worth culture, okay, where people are worth how much they can earn, okay, and remember that women weren't earners back in the day, 
a lot of women are still not getting the pay and a lot of women are still not earning a lot of women are still relying on um, men to pay for them in many situations they have to because that's interwoven in the culture to keep women enslaved to men um, in many many countries that's still happening right where women can't go out to work and so um, something interesting about the bridal culture that people still participate in okay and um, I find it a little bit twisted <laughs> in that um, within the Roman Empire, women were given away, right? Because women is not worth anything. Sorry. <laughs> Just the shadow, the shadow. <laughs> women, women to the, to the Romans. They, I would, I would, I would encourage you to really go and look into our, our ancient Roman history and uh, if and it can be quite upsetting and and in, in greek greek um the history of, of of the greek you know the greek empire because that's what's still running this is what's still running our culture now this is why there's so much darkness taking place right so um the women weren't worth anything apart with women were great tools for breeding um cleaning you'd have people who were bred to to become prostitutes and you would have people who are bred to become wives. Um, and of course, there are women bred to become slaves and, and different things. Of course, men too were bred for different and, and conditioned to become different things in society, right? But, but keeping to this worth ideology, right? The women was worth nothing much or nothing at all, which is why we have the given away um, at weddings where who gives this woman to be married and so you're giving because the woman belong to the man so the woman belong to the father and then the father gives her away because it's, it's his to give because women belong to men right and it is the father's property to give away to another man but not only that not only is she not worth anything the father had to pay <laughs> the man to take the woman. So that's where the dowry comes in, where the father of the bride would have to give a dowry to the husband, like, I pay you to take her off my hands. Because <laughs> she costs she costs a lot. She costs me money. Whereas sons, sons would earn money, you know, this is why this is why um men were worth more. Because you'll make money, they can go and campaign, they could do this, they could do that, they're bringing in money to the family. Your daughters were just good for decoration and giving away and cooking and domestic thing, which is where they get the, the, that, that, um, the statement about being a domestic goddess. This is also dark. But anyways, but um, so, so they would give gifts and money and whatnot. The, 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 the father or the family of the bride will give money to the family of the to the family of the husband and the husband of in arab culture their women was worth something <laughs> so at least the women were kind of sold you know um and depending on how wealthy the family that's the more wealth you would get and and, and also how beautiful um these women were so they would be sold you could get a really good dowry if you're well pretty or the the dad would you know become richer for being able to sell his daughter for whatever the daughter is worth okay according to the status and according to her beauty yada 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 okay and age as well mm. so obviously as we are sort of maturing a little bit psychologically and we're coming away from some of the darker practices in our culture some of us because some in some cultures this stuff is still going on okay it's up some parts of the world this is still happening um and you know us in in some of us in europe in the western world have moved on a little bit so in like here in in um in 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 europe um if you're in a Mus if you're muslim your husband to be would give you the dowry yourself and some people still practice where they give it 
to the wife and the family, depending on how, how much money you have. The woman can also decide how much her dowry is going to be. Things have changed somewhat, a little bit, okay? But what I do want to say is when we're talking about worth, right, where the man was worth so much more because the man could bring in a lot more money because the man was able to work, campaign, go do many things, her own titles, become wealthy, da 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 da. Women, not so much. Um, and children was worth nothing apart from their body, which you could sell. Which is why children are still being sold even up till now. So if we're looking in, I don't even know if I'm saying this properly, because you know what? This stuff really twists my brain to the point where. You know, I think I'm not even, I'm probably going to have to make this video another time and make it a little bit more clear because, you know, I, I feel like I'm jumping all over the place. But think about what it is, what it means now in our own modern time, right? If a man is still worth more or in certain cases where a woman is earning a certain amount and she's saying, this is my worth, I won't work for less than this. And people's worth are being calculated based on how many business you have, what your business revenue is, or how much ticket you sell, you know, how, how you can fill a stadium, basically, how much people will come. That's your worth. How much did you earn last year? And, you know, people say, oh, how much is he worth? And then, and depending on how much a person is earning, that's what they're claiming to be their worth. Then what is a child's worth if we are still saying our worth is based on how much money we can make. What is a child worth within that kind of then uh, ideation? So that's why we need to understand how certain things are impacting upon us in our subconscious mind. And also, how are we treating people or how are we allowing ourselves to be treated according to this hierarchism of worth and how much you're earning? If you're on benefit, how much are you worth? You just what I mean? Or if you have a small business, how much are you worth? Or if you're a stay-at-home mom, how much are you worth? This kind of idea. And if you're a child, how much are you worth? When we start to look at these things, it will help us to understand why as a child, some of us was treated so badly. And you, would, you might even hear, you're worthless. They will say, whatless in Jamaica, whatless. You're worthless. And remember that according to how much you're worth financially, by how much you can make another person, how much money they can make off you, that determines how you're treated and whether or not you are disposable. I was just watching a documentary not that long ago and they were talking about there are no women in the village apart from the mothers of these sons. <laughs> they have now got nobody to marry. Because they murdered off, uh, just the funniness of it, not the, the murdering, it's not funny, but the, the stupidness of how they murdered all these girls and now they have no one to marry. And you can see how this kind of dark psychology can cause people to murder their own children because this child is, is going to be just uh, uh, an expense and a humiliation as well for the family. So these little baby girls are being murdered and now there is nobody there for these their sons, their precious sons to marry, okay? And you see throughout cultures why in Jamaica we have that same culture where men are worth more. Um, this is why they, their boys can rape off girls, they rape off their, their sisters, they rape off their daughters, they rape off everybody and the family will still protect them because the girls aren't worth much. You see that the death rate is 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 um, people being murdered, children are being trafficked. Um, we see in Irish culture where boys are treated, um, and many people now older women are coming into therapy with this kind of thing where they've been treated very badly because their girls and their brothers were treated like princess princes, um, and they were treated just like servants. They were nothing in the family just because they were girls. And so we see this, this thing where okay, maybe they weren't murdering their girl children, but they were neglecting them because boys have this idea that boys are worth more, you know. And and on top of that, on top of that, to add more, more shadow and more darkness to this, you know, when a girl child is raped by the mom's boyfriend or even by the, by the, the brother, 
um, the daughter would be the one who is blamed for it. Um, that she was doing something that caused that to happen, you see, because the male was always protected. So you can see how this darkness, um, you know, this idea of worth and all this and being worthless and and how that can cause twisted psychology and twisted behavior um, in families and in businesses and, and different things like that. I really hope to God that I have made a video that makes enough sense for me to post it. Please let me know in this video um, if you understood what I'm trying to say. And, um, and maybe I'm going to have to make this a bit more clearer another time. Our worth is not based on how much we earn. Our worth is not based on our gender. Our worth is not based on color. Our worth is not based on our, our whether it's the talent, whether it's um, whatever talents you have or how much money you can make or, or your status or, you know, this, this um, classism or this, your class that you're in. Your worth is actually based on the fact that you are a sentient being. All humans have the same worth and the same value from birth. No matter where you're born, what family you're born into, um, doesn't matter if you're born in the ghettoest of the ghetto, doesn't matter if you're born in a trash heap, doesn't matter where you, or if you're born in a palace or whatever, no human is worth more than any other. And we have to really get this in our minds that none of us are better than anyone else. None of us is worth more than anyone. What you, you, I'm just gonna calm myself down. Whew. Whenever we're negotiating for pay, we need to know what our service is worth, what our talent is worth, what our skills are worth. Our self is priceless. The scripture says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That tells me that your soul is worth more than all the wealth on this planet. Every status, every, every, whatever, whatever, whatever titles a person want to have, whatever position they want to be born into, somebody born into a famous family is not worth more than the, the child that's born in the garbage heap. Somebody born into whatever bloodline is not worth more than the one born in a toilet in like these women who unfortunately are so poor and they can't even keep their children, that children are being born in toilets and some of them being dumped because this person is so stressed and they don't even know how they're gonna look after their baby and, and things like that. Doesn't matter where you're born, doesn't matter if you couldn't be kept by your parents because whatever situation you were born under and whatever stress and difficulty they had and you had to be given up, you are worth the same as any person, no matter where they're born, no matter whom they're born to, and no matter how much, you know, some people, some children are born and they're given, given everything because the family can give them everything. And they live in palaces, castles, mansions, all kinds of places like that. And because of that, their ego tells them that they are worth this much. And a person who was born in the lowliest which is, I think, why Christ was born in a stable to show us, to give us this kind of this 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 opportunity to see the polarity of those born in castles and born in 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 you know in in um, palaces and whatever. He was born in a stable, and yet he is the greatest among all of us. The way that our ego mind operate is like this. Your ego will look around at your circumstance where you live, 
the community you live in because it has to identify with its surroundings. So when it's looking at the environment that it's born in, it's saying, this is who I am, this is what I'm worth, and and you, you get low self-esteem because of it, and uh, low self-esteem, low self-worth, and, um, and that is why it's very hard for people to come out of this um, poverty mindset because you you believe in yourself that this is what you're worth and that you don't deserve a better life, you see, okay? And according to how you are treated by your family, how you're treated by the government, how you're treated by your community, your ego mind also internalize that and say, this is who I am. And again, you will then abuse yourself and you will, you will um, deteriorate from the inside out. So I hope this video has made enough sense. Like I tell you, you guys have no idea how dizzy I get making these videos. Um, but I want to say thank you for your subscription. And if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. And until next time, love, light.